Hey basketball players, did you know that Michael Jordan is not just a fantastic offensive threat, but he's actually a ma an amazing defensive player as well. In this video, we are going to break down what made Michael Jordan such a fantastic defensive player and how you can play defense just like MJ. Let's get down, let's check this out. So number one was his ability to really play strong defense. Check this out. So what he has done here is he started the whole possession by having his hand in the defender's face. Now this sets a precedent. If you ever do this in a game, this is not a foul until you touch his face. So make sure to stay away or at least far enough away from his face or the offensive player's face with your hand. Now what does this do? So number one, he's not going to be able to see any of his players on his team unless they're out towards his sides. This is a fantastic strategy to use and this is a strategy that really not many other players ever use. However, as a defensive player you need to be super quick because there's one thing that you can do to stop the other player from doing this to you. And that's what Kyle Lowry does and what Louis or Lou Williams does on the Clippers is if a player has their hand out, maybe not that high, but if their hand is out in front, they can swipe through and take that shot and that's one of the risks that you are having here. So keep that in mind. Now moving on, when this player tries to drive, Michael Jordan brings his hand down, like I was mentioning, you really have to watch out for that. That is just going to really make the other player ticked off. Now. When that player drives, let's watch Michael Jordan's feet. He's keeping his body, in front of his body, facing that offensive player. When that player does a fake spin move, Michael Jordan does it does not phase him because he's staying on his toes. He's got quick lateral feet. So he can wait until that player actually makes the move before he actually has to commit to going in that direction. That's why it was so hard for players to spin or fake spin because he just was going to stay right with them and because basically if you really know the scouting report on other players you know they're going to do a fake spin move or if they're going to do a real spin move however moving on from there he comes and turns around and he tries to shoot and look at Michael Jordan's hand as it is he knows that this player is going to turn around and he's going to turn around and take a shot however Look at his, Michael Jordan's arm. It's already up. It's already ready to block that shot. So, as soon as a player starts driving, get your hands up and in the shooting or passing lanes. Now, when that player goes up, Michael Jordan knows that player, he can't go up and, and fake. Let's face it. He's going to be, as soon as that player gets into the air, Michael Jordan is in the air. If that player was going to fake that shot, it didn't matter because Michael Jordan was going pretty well straight up. That player's only option is to pass it. Now, a lot of players these days, when they go up for a fake shot, even though this was not a fake shot, Michael Jordan goes straight up. So many players go into the player and when they try to block the shot. That's why you get so many fouls called on you if you go and try and block a shot. But if you go straight up and straight down, whether or not they jump into you, it's a foul on them in that case and not a foul on you. But you need to go straight up and straight down. Now let's watch this next clip. Charles Barkley gets that ball and Michael Jordan closes out, stutter stepping. And then when, it, when that player drives, Michael Jordan, when that player dribbles the ball too far out, he attacks the ball. Let's watch it in slow motion. So Michael Jordan closes out and stutter steps out. Now, from there, Michael Jordan's hands are down, palms are up. Look at those palms. The reason why you want to have your palms up is if that player drives or dribbles the ball down, you can swipe up and that's going to not be a foul if you even make contact most of the time. The reason is if you swipe down, there's more of a chance the referee is going to see you hit that player, but if you swipe up, you have a greater chance of hitting the basketball, but you also have a greater chance of not being called for a foul. Let's face it, if you're swiping down and the ball's going down, you don't have anything to hit other than an arm, but if the ball's going down and your hand's going up, what are you going to hit? The ball. That's why. 
Now, moving on, when he goes and attacks. Now, mean, meanwhile, Michael Jordan did, re did reach there, but we'll ignore that because it wasn't called. This player drives. Now, this player is driving, but the ball is super far out. He's really trying to keep that ball away from Michael Jordan. However, Michael Jordan notices that he's got another player on this side, and he's got another player over here who is willing to play help defense. Now, if your team is a willing help defensive team, you can be a little bit more risky on defense. And because of that, he goes and swipes for that ball and basically cuts that player right off to get that ball. This is something that you can do. You just have to make sure that you're doing it against a player who is dribbling the ball up towards their shoulder height because now you've got a much higher chance of swiping that ball. If this player was only dribbling at hip or knee height to drive, you're not going to have the option to do this. But this player, what looks to be Charles Barkley, but I could be wrong, is dribbling at shoulder height and because of that, Michael Jordan's able to swipe that ball. Now because he swiped that ball, he was able to turn this into a fast break, which led to a nice basket. Now let's watch this next clip. Michael Jordan's really d this player up tight, but look at where his hands were. Now we're slowing it down. We have Michael Jordan who is keeping his shoulders lower or at least trying his best to keep his shoulders lower than the offensive players. Now I watched a video a very long time ago where he explained that he liked to have his shoulders lower than the offensive players because that made him faster and on the offensive side he tried to get lower because that helped him become faster than the defender. Now going away from that we watch Michael Jordan's hands. What's Michael Jordan doing? He has his palms facing up, which is now taking away the driving side over here, so this player is being forced to dribble towards that left side. Now, what we see here is when he tries to swipe through, because Michael Jordan's palms are up, he is, and he's low enough, he's not swiping down on the ball, so when this player tries to swipe through to either do a jab step in this direction or to try and drive in that direction, Michael Jordan is able to take that ball and strip that ball right away because his palms are up and he had them low enough right by that player's knees which allows him to swipe that ball really easily. If you're looking to be a really good defensive player one on one, this is a skill that you're going to want to have. Now if you, if you keep your hands too high, you are going to hit their arms and that will be a foul, but if you keep them lower and you're able to swipe that ball away without hitting their hands or their arms, you're going to be very successful. However, if you hit their hands, unless there's a big slap, generally speaking, a referee is probably not going to call it. So keep that in mind. Again. If a referee calls it, they probably seen that you might have hit their hand or their arm, so keep that in mind. So another thing that Michael Jordan was really good at was swiping the in pass to that post player. So here we see here he is battling against that post player. A player from the wing tries to pass the ball into the post, but Jordan was able to swipe it. Now how was he able to do this? Now, as a defensive player, Michael Jordan right here, what he's doing is he is giving pressure to that post player to not allow him to gain too good of a position in that low post. You're allowed to defend your ground. So if a player is trying to post you up, you're allowed to stand your ground. You can't really push back all that much, but you are allowed to hold your ground. Now, that's what he does here. Now, he takes a step back, which is now going to allow that player to feel that there's space in between. Now why is this beneficial? This is actually creating space for Michael Jordan to now jump around that player. So if you are in this position and now you're seeing a lob pass, this is not a nice bounce pass in, this is not a nice chest pass in, this is a arcing lob pass, what you can do is now jump literally around your player and swipe that ball. Now, of course, you're going to need to know how to jump. You're going to need to know how you can use your angles 
And what Michael Jordan was able to do here was he seen that was coming, he got back on that foot, he was able to bend his legs, and he jumped when that ball was on its way down so that that player had no chance of getting it. Also we noticed that Michael Jordan did not make any contact at all with that player and that's because if you were to make contact with that player you would be called for a foul so keep that in mind. Another thing that made Michael Jordan so great was his help defense. Now let's break this down. What made Michael Jordan's help defense so good? As we can see here this player has the ball, MJ is over here, and this player has his head down and he's driving towards the rim. Now, what we see here is Michael Jordan notices that this player is single minded and he is going to go towards that rim. He is having a main goal to go towards that rim. He understands that there's already a defensive player here who is going to be standing his ground and staying straight up. You don't really want to jump for many shots unless you know that you're going to be able to block them. Now, with Michael Jordan's help defense, he knew that this player was going to go up for a shot and even if he didn't, he was going to be able to block any pass that was coming over towards this side. This player really only had one option and that was to block that shot. There was no other way that player was going to be able to score there. He wasn't going to be able to pass or anything. And this is something that we've seen in multiple occasions like we see here. So here we have Michael Jordan in the low post on defense again and check out what he is doing. He's jumping side to side. Why? He is jumping side to side because he is confusing both the offensive player with the ball and the low post player as well. This is something that Michael Jordan did a lot. So when he jumped to one side, he also sort of did pull the other player but referees didn't see it. Don't do that. But you can jump to one side and then jump to the other and then jump back. And now this player is trying to get position. If you have a player who is trying to post you up, what's the one thing that's going to confuse the anything ever, like confuse the crazy anything out of him? Is you jumping back and forth and him unable to get a good low post position. And because of that, he is going to be also trying to bounce back and forth, trying to get you behind him. And because of that, the passing player is going to pass into you you're not going to be in position and he's and yourself or whoever is doing the jumping of back and forth is going to be able to get that picked off pass now this is something that Michael Jordan did on multiple occasions and that you can do as well. I hope that this defensive breakdown has helped you become a better defensive player. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again in our next video.